Okay, it's a quick demo here. Uh, heat it back up a little bit. I'm at 62 degrees, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. And about 9 milliliters. We're at 9 milliliters. Just doing a quick visual test. I'm going to shoot a flame down the thermal conduit. <laughs> That alone. Well, we started at nine and we're still kind of moving. Just that little blast of heat. We got about two millimeters, two milliliters. About just that one hit. So I'm at 11 milliliters or 11 cc's. And 79 degrees. Safe to say it's probably evened out. So I'm going to hit it again. It's just going to kind of propagate. Now I know this isn't very swift, of course, in action, but I'm going to produce a system that can quickly fluctuate the temperature of the oil. Hopefully within a four-second cycle it will be heated and cooled. I don't know if I can heat something in two seconds and then cool it in two seconds, but that's the ideal operating parameter. Oh, sorry. We're looking at about 110 degrees on the strip, 136 on the face. Now that'll e even out. We started off at 9 cc's and we are closing on 14. Just to do a quick reference of why I have the black tape on there. Basically the same surface. They advise using the black tape when doing shiny surfaces. So you see I'm at 84 and all this and definitely seems to make a difference getting an accurate reading. So far we got 14, well not 14, but fifth or 5 cc's. Stupid today. I don't think we're going to get much more. It takes a while for that temperature to flow through that oil. It's a poor heat conductor. So even though I'm getting these temperature readings of this and that, we're still we're dropping on the casing but the oil inside is still heating up to some temperature of say 87 degrees, you know. It starts to start retracting, which it looks like we're at that point maybe. I'll take that temperature. So we're at about 5.2 cc's of expansion. And typically the heat burst I just gave that would give us a thousand psi's of pressure. So we could get a functional stroke of two and a half notches on this syringe at 500 psi's. At the end of that stroke it won't have a thousand psi's. You'll start off at a thousand psi's at nine cc's. Let's say we close the valve and heated it up to the temperatures we just observed. The pressure would climb to a thousand psi's. If we cracked the valve and it went up to the current observed position, it would be at zero psi's. So the point in between that we'll be able to effectively harness an energy of 500 psi's.
it's kind of hard to understand if you haven't seen this drawn out graphically on a piece of paper but that's how this would operate if, if this thing would get up to 5,000 psi's in a full stroke we'd only be able to use half the stroke because at the very end of the stroke the pressure is zero and another way of looking at it is the amount of expansion you get from thermal expansion let's say it expanded from 9 to 15 as we've seen if we were to compress this oil with a force down to 9 cc's we would get a thousand psi's so the amount of force needed to compress the fluid to a certain position at a certain temperature is equal to the fluctuation and movement you would get kinda cool